Hi guys, we've got an applications of calculus question today which states that I've got a train leaving a station accelerating from rest at a constant 0.25 meters per second squared for two minutes. How far does the train travel in this time? And what is the velocity of the train at the end of the two minutes? Okay, well let's unpack what we need to actually do here. So this is one, a sort of a question that's asking us um, about our knowledge of the relationship between vel velocity, acceleration, and displacement, or if we do them in order, displacement, x of t, velocity, v of t, and acceleration, a of t. Now ho hopefully you guys will all be aware that if we're going from this direction, we're differentiating. So we're taking, uh, you know, we're doing d dt to go that way. Now, if we're going back in this direction, we're anti-differentiating or we're integrating with respect to t. Okay, so to start with, let's see what we're given. So we're given a uh, formula for, or a relationship for acceleration. So it's accelerating from rest at a constant 0 0.25 meters per second squared. So we can state, so let's just write down the question down, A. So we can state to start with that A in terms of T, the function that describes acceleration is going to be equal to just 0 0.25. Now this is for the first two minutes. So you could write a domain there if you want to be super specific, but in this sort of question, I don't think it's necessary. So, how far does the train travel this time? So we've got to go from a of t to x of t. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by going from a of t to v of t. So we're going to we're going to write the relationship. So v of t is equal to the integral of a of t with respect to t. which is equal to 0 0.25 t. Great. So you can see that our velocity will be, excel uh, will be increasing at a rate of 0 0.25 meters per second every second. Cool. So, what we then have to do is we have to do go one step further and go back from velocity to displacement. Now, what we could do is we could um, work out the um, integral, so we could work out the displacement uh, function, and then we could sub in a 120, but what you can also do, I'll show you a quick method, so if you're using a graphics calculator in these sort of circumstances, you can actually write, well, x of t or x of 120 is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 120. Now the reason I'm using 120 is because we've got this two minutes here. So because all of our other um, you know, velocity acceleration are all in seconds, we have to say, well, this has got to be 120 seconds. So, going back to this, to find out what our displacement is at 2 minutes, we can take the integral from 0 to 120, or 0 seconds to 120 seconds, of the velocity function. Which is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 120 of 0 0.25t with respect to t. Cool. So let's evaluate this integral. So we're going to have raised the power by 1 is 2, divided that by 2, so you're going to have 0 0.125 t squared. This is a definite integral, so we don't have to write our plus c term, which I forgot up here. From 0 to 120. Cool. 
So this is then going to be equal to 0 0.125, 120 squared minus 0 0.125 times 0 squared. Okay, so once we've done this, we can go, well, 120 squared, 12 squared is 144, we'll add two zeros, and this is the same as saying an eighth, so 144 divided by 8, 4 times 2, two yeah, it's going to be 18, I think, yep. So this is going to be equal to... which is equal to 1800 meters or 1.8 kilometers. Cool. So let's go to part B. So it says the part A is the difficult one in this question. So part B, it just says, what is the velocity of the train at the end of the two minutes? So all it's asking for is V at 120, which is equal to, you can literally substitute it, this 120 into that formula there. So you're just going to go 0 0.25 times 120. So a quarter of 120 is going to be 30. Now make sure our units are correct, the velocity, so this is going to be meters per second. And that is our answer for part B. Not very complicated because we had to do part A to get to part B, so we can just literally use what we've done in part A just to compute part B. So not a very complicated question, guys. What we have, to, All we have to remember is our relationships between um, dis displacement, velocity, and acceleration. We have to understand that if we're going from displacement to velocity, we have to differentiate with respect to t. If we're going from velocity to acceleration, we also have to differentiate with respect to t. But if we're going backwards, like from acceleration to velocity, we can integrate with respect to t. And again, from velocity to displacement, we integrate with respect to t. So I hope this video has helped. If it has, give it a bit of a thumbs up, do us a favour, subscribe to my channel, and um, I'll see you guys all next time. If you have any problems, just make sure you um, send them to me, because I'm always looking for new problems to post videos on. So, yeah, don't have any hesitation to send them to me, and I'll give them my best shot. Alright, I'll see you next time.